Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Waitley School Committee meeting. Um, sorry for the delay last week. It's not a fun morning. Some of us. <laughs> Better for others. Glad to have Thank, you back. I appreciate everybody's <laughs> flexibility. <laughs> um, so we'll start off with the review of the minutes and approval of the minutes. Does anybody have any? So moved. Questions? I second. All in favor? Okay. Um, financial statements. Can you go over uh, to Judy? Yep. The uh, warrants are making the rounds. You have uh, seven warrants in front of you for a total of $45,307.75. Um, the um, results of operations for January is also in front of you. Um, I have made some notes of some lines that we need to clean up and um, I work with Chrissy on doing that um, so that that will be in good shape over um, by the time we get the uh, February results next month. Uh, there are some small amounts that we need to worry about, some larger ones that we've got to um, figure out where we're going to uh, make those lines go. So, um, so is that what you mean when you say clean up? Yeah. Yes. Like to transfer so that negative balances, um, you know, are not negative. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of running negative balances in individual lines because at some point you lose track of where you are and you know rather make them work. So the major one she's you're referring to is the long term sub is right. what you're talking about because of some people you've had out. Right. Okay. Yeah, there was nothing budgeted in that line, so we'll have to find some places to um, move some transfer some money into that. And that's on page three of the report. Um, the top. It's, uh, <coughs> some other little ones, but uh, we'll get those cleaned up. So, so that you, okay. so that that's you don't like answer. having negatives. I don't mind having negatives, honestly, myself. But it's hard to keep track when you yeah. have negatives, particularly with the long-term sub issue. You know, then you're mm -hmm. trying to look at encumbrances and all of that kind of thing, and sometimes it can get away from you if you don't stay on top of them. That's just my. I don't okay. know. It's not like you have to clean them up every month, but you know, periodically, just making sure everything's in the right place. It's, good, the, it's good to know that Katie doesn't mind us going negative. Well, <laughs> as long as the bottom line is positive. Oh, oh, oh okay. I now I understand. Right. That's how right. I pay attention. Right. But the, the the business with the bottom line too is that as I have been starting to do a look see at uh, encumbrances in terms of salaries because that doesn't happen because payroll is not within the accounting system. Right. You know, I don't want us to be so close that we get nervous a month or two from now about, you know, where are we? Enough. Right. Yeah. So, so um, what did you say, That's Is that going to come out of somewhere else? Yeah, we've got, Percy and I will meet yeah. and figure out where, you know, where we can take some funds and, and move them in. Um, you know, so I you know, want to be mindful, and obviously she's the one who's um, managing uh, the expenditures here. So I want to make sure that she's got that uh, input into that process. But so. overall, we have more than half the budget left. And yeah, but you still have it through the year. Right, but you also have to remember All your salaries, salaries are not encumbered. So right. those are things that we need to just be mindful of. So, so am I correct mm -hmm. when I'm interpreting this? That this there was nothing put in the budget? There was nothing for long budgeted subs. for long-term subs. So. so was that an unanticipated? Or At this time last year, it, sh it should not have been, if my math is correct. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. So. What classroom is it, can I ask? First grade. First grade? Yeah. Well, the question is, did they take it out of substitutes? Do they do long-term subs? And yeah, I don't know if they create did a separate. Like, I think you guys are more specific right. about where you put things, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's just I don't think we were like, we were quite as specific. Yeah. Right, because it allows you to the long terms. If you do, if they're two are combined and you look at the sub budget line, you're like, wow, teachers have been out a lot. And you have long-term sub, you say, oh, okay, there's been one teacher's been out right. a lot. It's not this, you know, this, yeah. you know, so they. It's one of the reasons why they separated out, but yeah. Um, and currently, um, within the substitute uh, line itself, um, there's not really sufficient funds to get you through the end of the year and um, 
cover that amount. So, you know, again, we'll have to kind of do some, <coughs> some forecasting towards the end of the year in terms of regular sub usage, how much we can take from that line, and then where else do we go? So. Mm -hmm. No rule, no one can be out for this to be. <laughs> so, by the time you see the February results, we will have that done. Okay. So, when I was looking back at the budget last year, I noticed there was a sped budget up for our, which we don't have on here, but um, of $24,000. Was it sped revolving? Mm. There should be a light item for sped revolving. Yeah. It was in the budget. Sped yeah. 94-142 grant. Oh, that's the special education grant. Yeah, I can pull a report okay. Okay, on that grant. So I just want to make sure that we're charging whatever should be charged there. Okay. Which might further help the budget. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll pull that for you. It was 24 Okay, that helps. Questions on the numbers? No? Yeah. Okay, so why don't we move on then to public comment? Is there any public comment? Uh, <coughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Go <laughs> back at any time. <laughs> Planted in the audience. <laughs> I've, I've heard that over the years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Always guys. nice. That's what I always say when I come. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why you're surprised. <laughs> um, okay. Well, given that, we'll move on to unfinished business. There's discussion of playground and backstop. Mr. Main. I don't know whose item that is. That was just from my notes that we were discussing the playground and we were talking about that old backstop. That's not a Christian lane, it's the one. Oh, the, the one at the fire station? No. The one behind the, behind the post office. And the post office. There's like a, some kind of a structure back there. Oh, there's the playground structure, yes. Yeah. So the town has been encouraging us to look at it. If we Did anyone go and look at it? I think it looks like a piece of use outside equipment. It's in good shape. Yeah. I've seen it many times, but I mean, can it be dug up? <coughs> right. I don't know. Because it's, it's in concrete. Much. Can it be dug up without damaging it? Transported. And transporting it and stuff like that. I mean, that's something yeah. Keith could give us a little heads up. Keith, could this be removed in one piece and, and reburied or not? If it's not, then hopefully when the town ever decides on Sell some, some of these some of these properties. Maybe it can just go with the property as a let them yeah enjoy it. Okay, enjoy it. Let's say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I I know we have I, visions of a new playground, so right. I just want to make sure that we're thinking about what we want. We don't necessarily need to take this, but it's a right. good opportunity if it were to work. But if it doesn't, then we don't right. want to. There's nothing we have to do. You know? So I guess when we talk about the playground here, what's the what is our timeline on that, and what does this committee's um, role within that want to be, need to be, um, or are we doing that local, and then we can report back when we get some updates on that? I so are we moving from the oncoming agenda? Yeah, fairly long term. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the sense we have an idea crystallized just yet, but mm -hmm. we're happy to support it if there is one. Yeah. Try and help. Does that mean pay for? Well, try and find money for it, depending how much it costs. Bless you. I think that, you know, I don't know how old that playground is, but it probably could use a little facelift. But I know there's also a need for preschool. And not that we want to go overboard, but we right. certainly want to make things, you know, have places for kids to play and enjoy. And well, we were talking about, like, where would we put a preschool playground? So I'm not sure if one of the possibilities is to just get some. Um, early childhood sized pieces of equipment and just add it to the 
plate comments out there now. Out there, yeah. yeah. Does the preschool take the same recess as the bigger kids? No. They do their own thing. Right. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And they're out a couple times a day. What about outside their room and the front? I don't know what the criteria is for a preschool playground, but it's different than the regular, right? Yeah, I'm, I don't think I would want it. It's close just convenient, to, that's to the, all. Yeah, close without to the road. A, without a, a gate on the, <clears throat> there's, yeah. Okay, well, I just, I know you guys have been thinking about it, so I, I'm not trying to. But if it's inside of a fence and a gate, it could be just for preschool and preschool kids only, or families who come with their, with their young yeah, kids to use it. Yeah, the neighbor, like, when, the, when, the, when kids when are this, little. Yeah, when the nice kids are. a place for little kids to play. Yeah. Are, we, are we working on monies for the preschool playground? Not yet. We're still in the thinking stages. There was a, a woman. There's a of woman you. in Greenfield who does playground design that has do helped other schools in the area that we would want to think about tapping at some point. Sunderland right now is doing a big. Program. Yeah, I think Sunderland, that's where <coughs> I might have heard of that. So, um, but it gets very expensive. And so, yeah, it's, it's so you can kind of, I mean, Chrissy can have a conversation with Ben and just kind of get, find out what he has for information. And, Take a look at their plans. They actually have drawings and that kind of stuff, and some numbers, some preliminary numbers. But mm -hmm. can we get their old equipment? Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the idea is a lot of you know the, a lot of the playgrounds now. They're trying to make sure are ADA compliant um, and going with different kind of um, surfaces, the safe surfaces, that kind of stuff, and all that stuff gets very very expensive. So um, especially the surfaces. I remember yeah. when we did this one out here. You just can't put bark mulch down. You had to get a certain type of product that was shipped in, I think, from New Hampshire, it if I remember right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah. anyway, so those those prices all go up. So we got to kind of decide what the scope and... I thought maybe it would be part of the new softball field across the, across <laughs> the way. <laughs> well, they're it. thinking about I putting it in Carly Heath. Oh, are they? So, there's a decision. They're trying to look at both places. So it may not end up here, which is good and bad. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose any trees. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, that's so why don't we table the playground until you guys have a better sense? I mean, well, I don't. We don't need to keep talking about it until. I know there's grants. I think when we. Yeah, did, I think when we did this one out here, there was some grant money. There were some private donations for this one out here too, because I was part of it back. Back yeah. then, you can ask Mrs. H. She, I think she was part of it too. Mm -hmm. I know she. I know she. I think she do, yeah. donated. It was primarily the PTO that did the fundraising mm -hmm. for that, right. um, and it was around 2005, so the playground okay. in some ways is not that old, no. and adding on to it actually I think makes good sense to get that kind of, what you really need as a preschool thing, and at the time they, they talked about, yeah, the next thing we should do is a preschool, and then my kids went to Frontier, so <laughs> I didn't keep up with it after that. Um, but uh, but yeah, they got some nice local grants, Yeah. but we had raised about $30,000 for that, which yeah. might not be enough at the, <laughs> in yeah. today's dollars, um, but we had raised like something like 15 of it when we got a local match for 10,000, and then another 5,000 we raised with other things. But it was like three or four years with the fundraising before things came together. So now is probably the time to start, thinking. and thinking that you're not going to actually build it for another four or five years. Yeah. Is, is there? Um, is it supposed to be separate from the other playground, or is that, does anyone know? I think that would be up to us. It depends on what kind of accreditations we have. Like if you're, if you are NIAC accredited for your UK, it has to be separate. It has to be fenced in and has, you know, there's a, a long list of things. So I'll have to see if, um, I'll talk to Kim McCarthy and see if there are any requirements on us in, in regard to that. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I, I don't have any updates on the marijuana. Anybody else do? Sort of. I think it's a <coughs> place. Well, I okay. saw that they are donating money for some education. That's that's good. But if I read it correctly, the donation doesn't come till after they've been in the education for a full year. I don't know. I read this for last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense in the sense of that. 
you gotta have, have, you gotta have some can... something to sell before you can get some money to give. And, right. so, we'll so. That looks like up. Okay. And that um, would start like maybe in fifth, sixth grade. Oh, I don't know if there was any thoughts on that? Like before, like does that education start before they go maybe to middle for the school? teachers even before they go to the. <laughs> what type of education? So we can really look at that. I mean, we can the talk drug about awareness. yeah, drug. I mean, healthy minds, healthy bodies. Kind of, you know, you don't have to go directly say no to drugs. You know, routine. You can talk about. You know, there's a lot within the health curriculum. I'm sure that will fall underneath that. Um, uh, yeah, I just think it's so. important to start before middle school yeah. because definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it also had spelled out on there that. I was the contact person, so if there is an issue around, you know, someone begins to smell that after we're promised that there would be no, it'd be unscented, mm -hmm. um, people will contact me and then I'll get Did you know you were the contact person? I didn't, but it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, some, there was a parent whose parent lives in Pennsylvania, and there's some facility near where he lives, and... Um, they supposedly have the scrubbers and they can smell it. So I'm, maybe um, maybe they weren't kept up to date. So I'm hopeful that that we won't have that issue. We're gonna get the new Just make sure you know if, we, if we're gonna smell anything, it's gonna the, the wind's blowing out of the south. So I mean, anytime the wind's blowing out of the south, we're gonna you know we're gonna smell Yankee Candle. And, I'm okay with that. You know. Hopefully, hopefully if they got their filters. Hopefully, so they, they get the, the marijuana smelling. I was gonna say, it depends on <laughs> candle, depends on candle they're doing. Cause they smell about frontier too. <laughs> Peach blossom is nice. There's some other. Right, there's so. some that are you know, more desirable. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep an eye on that, and Chris okay. will be the second to know, if not the first. <clears throat> okay, so the big topic today, the budget. Uh, so. Um, you have in front of you a more fully fleshed out um, budget. So, uh, kind of walk you through um, the document. Um, so, uh, the first page is sort of a summary of the changes um, within the budget. Um, so, you can see uh, they're broken up by salaries as well as by operations. And so, um, collective bargaining, it looks um, pretty hefty. It includes projected steps. Uh, it includes a placeholder for some cost of living adjustments. And then also, Chrissy asked me to put in an extra special education instructional assistant um, that she's anticipating she may need. Mm -hmm. So that's why that is uh, as it is. Um, the non-union increase is um, not that particularly high. Um, part of the reason is that I also gave you a supplemental document around the, the cost share um, for um, the, the union and um, the region. And uh, as you can see from those numbers, your cost share is actually going down a little bit. Um, so for um, the union regional split last year, uh, this year it is. Sorry. <laughs> it is. Is that commentary or? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I shut it off already. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, um, you can see uh, this year it's 10.16 percent. Next year it's um, going to be 10.04 percent. You look down to the places where you just share among the union. Um, this year it's 15.27%. Next year it's going to go up a little bit to 15.48. So there's been some shifts in your overall cost share uh, depending on the, the expenses that you share. So some of that is part of what uh, the non-union increase is about. Um, the same thing with administration. Again, um, that looks a little bit hefty. There are some projected increases, your cost share changes, and it also adds the full-time business manager position back into the budget after you had taken it out, which brings us down to the projected operational changes. Uh, the big one, again, is the finance administrative services. That's um, the TMS contract will end on July 31st, so therefore that's line is showing a significant decrease. So that's going to offset, um, obviously, the business manager position. Um, 
Some of the percentages look high because the overall budget was low in terms of the operational changes. For example, uh, the decrease in guidance services, it was only $500 in that budget anyway. So you take half of it out, it's a 50% mm -hmm. decrease. So it looks huge, but it really isn't. Um, transportation bids are due by the close of business today, and we have a bid opening at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So. Mm -hmm. um, me. <laughs> you and we'll I open that. We'll run home. We'll <laughs> That's pretty so much it. One. You and I will be hanging out and, together. And open the bids real quick and move have on. We, have we got any bids yet? Yeah. Do you, know? do you have any bids? Um, we had one, two, three, four. I think five or six people take bids out. Mm -hmm. What has been returned yet? I don't know. Okay. So we'll see. Paula has that um, information, right? You um, told me before. The front office actually. Okay. Um, so MJ and uh, okay. Rhonda um, are keeping track of who's taking okay. out and who's bringing them back. Yeah, when you say a that bid's been taken out, what does that mean? It means somebody has requested the bid specifications, so part of the opening... A bus company. Right. Tomorrow. Okay. So part of the opening tomorrow will be to note who has taken bids out and who has actually returned them. So it's a formal process. Um, is this for the whole district or is just, yeah. Yeah, not just yeah. for waiting? Yeah. So that number um, we're just taking a look at right now. You also have some um, you have some sped yeah sped transportation being taken out of school choice. Um, I left that as a level funded number and projected a little bit of an increase that would be picked up by the local budget. And we'll talk about school choice in a minute. So, um, and I think those are the other big um, changes. So you'll notice that the net change um, is $81,083 uh, at 4.82%. That's with the SPED IA in um, at Chrissy's request. I also um, did it without the SPED, the extra mm -hmm. SPED IA in that. So it makes the, if you don't hire that person, it's 60491 and a 3.6% uh, increase at this particular moment in time. Um, Next uh, couple pages, three and four, is the cherry sheet, <coughs> and in an homage to history of cherry sheets. Appreciate you. Yes. <laughs> cherry. Uh, I changed them from blue to cherry because <laughs> if you don't know, back in the day before they came electronically, they were actually printed on cherry pink paper <laughs> and mailed to you. So. Oh wow. You didn't know that. No, I never Gee, saw. I'm old. No, we've never <laughs> seen this before. Yeah. So anyway, so you can see um, again. Chapter 70, there's a little bit of a um, <laughs> increase, <laughs> not much, but a, a teeny <laughs> little bit. Little now, this is the governor's budget. This is House 1. House uh -huh. 2 will probably come out, I'm guessing, sometime next month. It usually comes out late March mm -hmm. or so. The legislature is usually kinder to Chapter 70 than is the governor when he first puts the budget out. So mm -hmm. this is a good conservative number on which to plan um, your thinking. Um, you'll also notice that there was charter school uh, tuition reimbursement that has gone away. So either those students have gone to Frontier or they've stopped going to a charter school. Do you know how many kids that was for 25,414? Probably two. Two. Two? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Because charter schools um, get the full per pupil expense. So their school choice only gets 5000 yeah. plus a sped increment if the kid has uh, special education services. The school choice receiving tuition is down <coughs> quite a bit. It's down from uh, 281 729 to 23393 and that actually that 23393 takes effect in FY19. There's always a December adjustment to school choice um, that happens after the October 1 count. Uh, and so they also take a look back at what happened last year between March and, and June during those um, moments when they dip into our student data across the state. And then everything is factored by the number of full-time equivalencies that the child is actually in membership in the school. So, so I'm sorry, are you saying that could go up if we... It could. In December? But that's the number right now. Right. You know, so that also gives us some pause about what's happening and I have noticed that um, the December and January payments coming in for school choice are reflective of that decrease. decrease. And it will be enough to make up to had five months of coming in at the higher rate. So they will make up the differences as they mm. move that along as well. So that's something that is concerning to me. So just mm -hmm. again, trying to keep uh, 
an eye on that. And then you can see the unrestricted go uh, general government aid, the library aid, um, all of that kind of business. And then you've got, um, you know, so when you look at the total estimated receipts to the town of Waitley from FY19 to FY20, there is a decrease. Mm. Um, then the, you look at the assessment side of the picture, um, and that starts at the bottom of page three and goes on to page four. You can also see that there's a significant decrease in the amount of charges coming from the state. Um, so it was 134, 674 estimated for FY19. Right now uh, for FY20, it's estimated at 59,646. So the net change of receipts and charges is um, about a $7,000 decrease to the town of Waitley at this juncture. Um, mm -hmm. We're very early in the process, but just wanted to give you that full picture because at the end of the day, it is all coming from one uh, source of funding for the town of Waitley. So just having that picture kind of helps, um, helps you know what's going on. Any questions about the cherry sheet? Next meeting, can we have um, tuition going out? Can we, find, can we see where they're going? Uh, you know, have them, right, we saw one last year. Yeah. And we can see where the kids sure. are going, what right towns. Now, right now we have, in terms of um, charter, we have one student going to. Yeah, I'm talking about school choice. Yeah. 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 School choice. Yeah, charter and, and choice. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I'll um, pull that for you. Can we go back to the other page for a second? Sure. So, school choice, school choice for last year for re receiving school choice was what the hell is the other page? Hold on. School choice right here was, was two eighty one seven twenty nine, and our projected school choice coming in this year or next year, I should mm -hmm. say, is fifty about fifty one thousand dollars less. And that. What, that's already taken effect at 230, 393. Okay. okay. Because that's the December adjustment, and they use the December adjustment as planning for the the following fiscal but fiscal we, year. So that already yes, is in already effect. Yeah. So we're up in in so many terms. We have already spent that money, correct? Because we're spending instead of pay, spending in rear, we're spending ahead now. So we're. Right, and, and not to alarm anybody, but we're still, well, when we but get we're also fifty-one thousand dollars difference. Right, on so, it, so yeah, and and um, school choices is of concern, so we'll get to that in a couple of seconds. Okay, okay thanks. In terms of analysis okay, of that. Thanks. Okay. Speaking of which, page five <laughs> happens to have uh, the school choice analysis. So. Um, our accounting department has done a um, reconciliation with the town accountant on the balance forward as of June 30th of $205,912.44. There are some accrued payrolls from FY15 that get paid over the summer no months, um, and that was 13653 So your actual sort of moving forward balance is 192 on uh, 259.25. Um, anticipated revenue is that 233.93. That's the December adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, and that came right out of um, the DESE Office of uh, District and School Finance. So when you put together the rollover balance plus the revenue coming in, you know, you're sort of um, looking at 422.652.25. Um, the budgeted expenses within the accounting software right now um, are 332 463 um, and I've got to do sort of a trace back to where those numbers came from um, mm -hmm. and I need to sit with payroll um, to walk through all of that because some of these numbers don't make a lot of sense to me right now so mm -hmm. I'm going to walk that back and see where we're at. So your anticipated balance going into FY20 would be 90189 um, If you were to use that school choice number, the 230-393, your totally anticipated revenue for FY20 would be 320582.25. If we left spending patterns somewhat the same in school choice, 
you are pretty much right at the edge of what they call the funding cliff. Um, your anticipated budgeted expenses would be 318, 372, which would leave you potentially with a balance of only $2,200 moving forward after next fiscal year. Um, so, not much for a rainy day. No. Mm -hmm. And that's without the salary increases? That is with, um, that's with sort of level funding, a lot of what's being taken out of school choice and some of those salary increases have actually crept into the local budget. I did not <coughs> change what you were taking from school choice on purpose because I knew we were at this place. If I were to put the, the increases on top of this, you'd be in negative territory. So. so can you explain the tuition mass schools, what that is? Um, that's the, an out-of-district special education placement that right now is in school choice, okay. um, as well as the transportation associated. So we pay that versus the town in this case? Yes. Right? Like in other cases, the town is paying for some of those. No, it's actually considered an expenditure. We placed place them as oh, a school yeah, so we, if they actually came okay. here. Okay. Yeah, so this would be a special education <coughs> placement. This is not a school choice or a charter placement. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that IA salary, the SPED salary, that's actually the same salary that we had budgeted in that SPED account before? So for the budgeted expenses for this year? I Those are offsets to um, SPED IA salaries? And not right. the full tilt. I think I'm just wondering if that amount should be coming from the grant rather than from the school choice. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we could research that. I don't know what the difference I, is. Absolutely. That um, seemed to be where they were putting it originally. Because <clears throat> I was Maybe just. Maybe there's a reason I got moved back to the school choice. Yeah. I just. Uh, Check the spread revolving. Maybe grant. I don't. It's just bad. I don't know what the account it was. Okay. It's I'll the check same it. account we've been using for the last three years to put spread account expenses. Okay. Now, again, I was just looking at the spending pattern from this past year and kind yeah. of following that. So, but I'll certainly check on well, that. Well, it does look like it was put into this the school choice for mm -hmm. this year, but in past years it's been in a different grant. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be that, um, you know, uh, that grant is a federal grant, and so some of the entitlement grants have been decreasing mm -hmm. um, over yeah, the past few years. Mean. So it may be that ju there just wasn't funds enough to cover that. Yeah. The tuition to mass schools, is that our other schools like Conway or Sunderland, or is this placement for one child for $28,500? It's to a Massachusetts public school, so it would be, it could be Sunderland, it could be Conway, it could be... But do we know? I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking. We, we know. Do okay. I know right here? No, but okay. we can find out yeah. where the where yeah. kid's going. Yeah. I mean, and we would have if it's out of district, meaning out of our district, that you know that's yeah. that's a that's given a, the price tag, it's probably in, in the house. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's right. Because if student anything yeah. out of usually our it's a lot more. They have distribution around forty-five plus. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that Williams? I think that's where it is, mm -hmm. but I don't want to. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to guess, but mm -hmm. I think that's where this yeah. is. At. <laughs> so, obviously. This is what's keeping me up at night right now, <laughs> okay. is this uh, kind of school choice number. And so, I mean, I mean, when we look at that, I, I, to me, it's a dangerous place to be that close to school choice because right. you have a change of one or two kiddos and all of a sudden you're in a deficit here. Yeah. And so, you know. Uh, I, I've got a lot more digging to do into those numbers and where those budget numbers came from um, for this fiscal year and mm -hmm. where we stand with that. And again, looking at anticipated expenses against school choice are they going to be lower than those budgeted numbers and so that's you know kind of the surround of, of the investigation that needs to happen um, I also did um, can I ask a question before you go to sure. the next page mm -hmm. so I mean I've been on the school committee a long time um, I, I just I just look at the three hundred thirty two thousand four hundred sixty three dollars for teacher salaries speech salaries, IA salaries, special ed IA <coughs> salaries, transportation and tuition to mass schools. Back in the day when we used to get some get some money and it was the year that we would spend it, we spent it more for things that our kids needed as items. I remember the I'll go back to the computer lab that we bought for fifty thousand dollars one time back in the day. 
we're using all the school choice money for sal we'll say salaries for operations, yeah. and you know my firm belief is if we can get I know I know we always look at that budget line at two and a half but boy if we can get rid of some of these salary lines so when we do need something like a playground we could dip into school choice money for a playground because <coughs> we'll have some extra money right now we can never do that right but I mean but we need the school choice money to run the school right now That's but the in animal. the back in the day we never had to pay for salaries out of school choice right, money right right those and that, that, was, that was used to be the conventional wisdom was that you always spent the year prior right. and you left what was coming in unless you needed it for some one-time expense or whatever mm -hmm. to sort of fund the following year because again the December adjustment you don't really know what's going to happen you know you had a $51,000 December adjustment um, you know so now you're looking at not only that you know this budget may have been built based on the 281 anticipated and not looking at the December, mm -hmm. you know, adjustment. So, you know, what does well, that look like? No, we knew this. That we know we kept yeah. knowing this was yeah. coming. I think the and problem I think is the expenses are growing faster than right. Revenues. And this is the whole fundamental conversation that's being had about budget. about Chapter Seventy. Right. Is that and that's why there's been a huge push by the uh, Superintendents Association on the Chapter 70 issue because mm -hmm. Chapter 70 has not kept up with health insurance, nor has it kept up with, um, Salaries you know, with them. technology coming into the school or mm -hmm. just the rising cost of operating school buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, the governor has a long-term plan that really doesn't get us to where we need to be. And like now, the other thing is that we've lost residents. Like our school choice, yes, has gone down a teeny bit, mm -hmm. but it's actually been pretty steady. Right. But what's happening is we have like ten less residents or more than we had, say, ten years ago or eight years ago. Right. right. And so right. then we're not getting funding for them either. Right. right. So it's a little. It's like a lot of different moving parts. Right. Absolutely. Now. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. It would be great to not put anything into school choice, but. It seems like we really need it. But it just seems like every time that I've seen over the years, every time that we need to fund something <coughs> for for salaries, we'll just we'll pick on salaries that we're taking out of school choice money. Right. And you know, there's going to be a time and place where this two and a half or the three point whatever the budget is this year is going to be half. Either we go higher. Or we, or we start making or we start making some cuts and I mean, this is what we have to talk to the town about like yeah. what is the town willing to take on in terms of supporting the school because right. that's and really was, the question and yeah. you're kind of going where i was going with that a moment ago bob is that this number you can't play this close to the fence no you have to it, i mean i would say you have to at least be twenty thousand dollars um in the black with with, uh, with uh, choice numbers because you got to be able to have the fluctuation of a few students moving. Now you could take in five more students, then you'd have more of an excess. But um, you do want to build that up as a um, you know so that you can use it to spend down the toward the assessment, not be the line item of revenue in your budget. Right? Right. You know, and so um, and right now you've done over the years is slowly chip away at yeah. the assessment to the town which is understandable because right. no one wants to see their you know see raise things go up and then see you sitting on a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand um, dollars but you get down too low we get operation mid-year lose three students and now all of a sudden we have to find money that doesn't exist in our budget for you know three students fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars so you know all of a sudden we'd be looking for twelve thousand dollars to make up for this so um, in an already, you know, it's a tight budget. There's not, right. you know, so there's, there's, not, there's, there's no right. things in the budget. It's all, it's, it's people and services to students, yeah. so. Um. And then uh, <coughs> just so you could see what the school enrollment choice trends were, um, I pulled this, actually somebody in some time pulled it up for some of them, and I thought, you know, well, yeah, it might not be a bad, <laughs> bad little graph to, to include as well, just so you can see the sort of the history <coughs> of the ins and outs of receiving and sending uh, in school choice. So, uh, just a little. Nice chart. A little extra information for you. So we're projecting that nine kids next year will be school choice out, correct? Is that what I, I read this or FY19? Or, yeah, that's or is that this year, I should say? It's the preliminary for, for FY19, yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing to think and keep in mind here is that the 
residents are around 85, 89 with this. They went up to 100. They were in 100s when you, you know, yep. in 2007. Mm -hmm. So that's really where the difference is. There's 11 or less residents mm -hmm. in town. But there's a baby boom happening, it's my understanding. So we're about to get more, more residents. <laughs> Just need to keep them here. <laughs> and that FY19 preliminary number would not have included the December adjustment. So just, you know, so you're aware of that. So would not have included. No, no. This would have uh, preceded that. Okay. So just so you're aware. Because according to this, it looks like we should get the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. Right, but obviously. But they're December. not giving us the same amount. Right, so somewhere <laughs> in the December adjustment. So just so you know okay. that that preliminary number is not the December adjusted number. But just thought again, for the sake of uh, having some history, it might be interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. So on uh, the last several pages of this document are the actual budget. And as I explained to you a little bit um, at the last meeting, our approach is to tie, kind of do this sort of all funds um, and then there's offsets um, that can be shown against that um, as well. And so I can go walk you through uh, what the offsets are. A um, couple of changes that I just wanted to make you aware of. If you look at on page eight, um, you'll see two, um, two lines that are highlighted. And then one is classroom teachers. Um, and you'll notice a significant increase to that number, and the reason for it is on page nine, um, and you'll see this in your February results, there has been a request by, the, or not a request, but uh, directed by the um, State Department to uh, recode salaries from function 2310, which is currently your teacher specialist line. They don't want regular salaries coming out of that line. They actually want it coming out of um, classroom teachers and also creating ones within 2305. Um, they want us to use 2310 for stipends and that kind of thing, but not for regular salaries. So if you look at classroom teachers 2305, that's why that's up, because the people who were in the specialist line are now in the classroom teacher line. Um, the same thing with SPED teachers. That was in that 2310. We were told that that needed to change as well, so we created a new line within the budget um, for SPED teachers. Um, so those numbers reflect those changes of, of required coding. But there's no <coughs> amount in there. Right, right. So we would not budget in those lines for FR20, and those actually, I made the transfers on Friday. So when you see your February results, you'll see zero in those lines, but those numbers will have moved to uh, function 20. So you're saying the numbers in the first column were in that category. We're back here, right? 2310 right. originally, and now they're moved. Right. They actually wanted us to make the change for this, for this fiscal, year. fiscal year. So okay. I made that I made that budget change on Friday. So in the February results, you will see that. So can you just help me understand what a specialist teacher would be like? What because um, that is different than a classroom teacher. Yeah, right? it <laughs> would be like Spanish or your uh, Title I, if you have Title I, ESL. Those are the things that have been coded across the district in that line. But Speech mm -hmm. therapist? No, they no. have their own. Their what own about function. art and PE? They seem to have their own lines. They have their own lines within the 2305, but they want everybody who's uh, sort of delivering, shall we say, regular education services to be in that 2305 function, mm -hmm. so. And also the, um, the SPED teachers who are considered inclusion teachers, that they're they up in that line I'm as well. I'm surprised because teacher contracts has the specialists, like uh, speech therapists and stuff, are on the teacher contracts, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. But so I'm really, su I'm really surprised that they don't. Well, for the purposes of state reporting, and that's why oh, okay. all of this is happening, because when you do the end of the year report, you have to report your special education expenses differently than you report your regular education. So that's why some of those ancillary services are um, off. Also for the purposes of like um, Medicaid reporting and things like that, or <coughs> doing, um, Medicaid reimbursements, and those um, need to be looked at differently. So that's why they have their own sections of the budget. Those were the big highlights. 
So again, if you go back and if you get on to the bottom of page 12, um, again, you'll see um, the two numbers I mentioned on the summary page, the 8308, excuse me, 81083 at 4.82%, and then taking out that SPED IA brings it down to 60,491 um, and 3.6%. So that's where you currently stand. So it's a, a, a total of 3.60 percent. Yeah, if we don't add that extra SPED IA in. So. Is that for a particular classroom? Is that for one child? Is it? How will, when will we, do we have an idea of when that, how we decide that? Or? Um, yeah, we have to be very, we have to be very, right. be very careful in small about community. This situation. Um, but so, I guess from a budgeting perspective, correct. Do, we bud um, do we need to we need to plan for that? Is sort of it would be driven by a child's educational plan. Mm -hmm. So if their IEP is written that they have to have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, from a generic standpoint, that would that's be what that would that would be more understandable that we we're going to need a one-on-one. -on -one and mm -hmm. I mean, right. it, it happens. I mean, it's okay. So <coughs> instead of taking out of school choice, if we don't have any school choice money, right. we've got to put it part of the budget. Right. Right. right? I mean, that, here's yeah. the perfect perfect example of if there was if there was school choice money, then I mean, I hate to say it, but then we would be dipping there instead of doing it part of our regular no, budget. Right. So, like for example, I did put like the tuition line in for other math schools, but because it's being paid out of school choice, it's not in the local budget at right. all. Right. But you, just so you can see some of these moving parts, the same thing. If you go back a page to transportation, you will notice that um, in special ed transportation, I'm projecting fourteen thousand, but you've been putting in twelve five. Yeah. So you notice that the anticipated yeah. increase is now living in the local budget yeah. because I didn't want to tax school Got it. choice. Right. So. so that's I mean that's good. I mean it's part of the regular regular budget. Mm -hmm. But the two one five, the last line here with the pink is the total budget two one five six. Right. Seven, that's five, the total nine. all funds. All funds. If you look to the local budget, your local budget is one million seven sixty two three forty one with that IA in, mm -hmm. and it's one million seven forty one seven forty nine without it in. So, okay. yeah. And it's if you're comparing like last year to this year, it's the two blue columns for the town. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's up eighty thousand. Whereas last year we asked for forty thousand. So since we do have a select person in our in our room and stuff, and we're talking about an increase of possibly three point six or four point eight, you know, how's all the other departments coming with their budgets and percentages? Have you heard anything? Um, they've not actually presented those budgets okay. publicly yet. When's but they when, when will you hear from I thought the meeting schedule for tomorrow was going to be about the capital plan. Okay. Um, and then two weeks subsequent to that, I think they'll have a set of, usually not all the departments on one night. That'll get broken up into a couple. Well, and um, the finance department has asked to meet with us. I don't know if they finalized it on the 25th. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, usually one of those, like, I feel like we we have two big meetings with departments, one of them with um, being with the, the school and maybe yeah. some other things, so that okay. those dates are, I, I imagine. Right. Well, I don't know, did they reach out to you? Because they yeah, wanted they, to they do, do Frontier also, yeah. just lately. I saw, I saw some emails and yeah. 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 Bill asked me. <clears throat> and I don't know if right. those were. Exactly. It was set up, but I just have to remember the date, so give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the 26th. I thought the 26th. 26th. Yeah. Um, Is it part of the regular meeting? Yeah. Well, they they don't seem to have regular meetings. They just set up meetings no. when they meet. Yeah, they, yeah they so that's a so Tuesday. It's a special meeting that. But during the budget season, they meet pretty much every other week. Week, yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's Tuesdays at five this year. Um, it, it it's not always the same day. Right, but last year I remember getting a directive that they said two and a half was sort of what they were looking for from people, but. I don't believe but that's what they're always anything. looking for. Is that what they're always looking okay. for? The two right, two. right. And I mean, I, I can't speak for the for the board, but I know for the past, you know, X number of years we've gone from 
as you know, Bob and you all pointed out, we'd gone from spending uh, school choice money only as it comes in mm -hmm. uh, to slowly spending it ahead um, and kind of, and, and I think you pointed that out to the finance committee at the time. Mm -hmm. And you know that, so every single year that came up, we're spending money ahead, we're spending money ahead. And they said, yes, please do that. Thank you very much. So I, I think there's a recognition that this, the, of what the school had to do to keep their budget in kind of the, the, the pretty low range that it's been for the last, gosh, I don't know exactly how many years, but I feel like it's at least five or six years. Um, so I think when you come this time, you have to say, well, you know, we're small numbers, you know, and three school choice kids can make a difference mm -hmm. and, and make, make your argument, you know, with, with the numbers. I mean, I think you have them, right? So uh, that's, uh, I, I think they might understand that this is coming. They might not know it's this year. Right. right. <laughs> but because uh, I remember in the past, I don't think we knew it was this. Year. Yeah. You know, we said, well, spend some of your school choice money. You know, we would have twenty or thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars. Well, why don't you save? Why don't you spend some of that? Well, we're trying to figure a rainy day if we ever had a problem, sprinklers yeah. or whatever. We would right. have it for rainy. Day. Well, right. Again, but, but even like this year, you've got all of a sudden fifty thousand dollars less than you thought you might have. Right. So, twenty thirty. Fifty thousand dollars seems like a buffer to me. Two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. No, that's not a buffer. That's we really got to start spending that. Right. But of the order that you're talking about, it, you've got a really good argument to say, look, my uncertainty. Here I am, physics teacher. The uncertainty <laughs> in the amount of money that you're going to get is, you know, relatively predictable. You know, and you've got you that can look at the past, and you've kind of got your fifty thousand dollar number from this year. So, so I think you can make a good argument and, and call upon the uh, X number of years of very good will that's been brought up by doing the spending ahead mm -hmm. and not bringing it back to the town. That's, um, you know, it's, I think it's a reasonable argument. I know people aren't always reasonable in their first reaction, but I think after they hear you, they'll understand. I hope so. <laughs> so we're at a point now where do we move forward with those numbers to, to, the, to the finance to the finance committee presentation or um, do, well, are, do we, do we, we feel make, like these are final? Are there, are there anything other questions besides? Well, they're final in the sense of that's what our projected expenses are for next year. Mm -hmm. You know, and then so if especially the the higher number, mm -hmm. you know, it's just not it's just not doable. The question is, do we have that conversation with the finance committee to have that conversation? What is, because you get into a very, because then you talk about reductions. Yeah. Okay. There's no, there's no fluff. So it's not like we're going to get rid of, you know, the bales of hay we're buying. <laughs> okay. So, you know, there's, it's, everything's connected to people and that kind of stuff. And so it's, we're very careful in a small school to, if it's not, if it's not acceptable, then, you know, we can go, you know, we will be already talking behind the scenes, but before we start talking about in a public meeting how we would adjust the budget, I'd like to know what we're talking about mm -hmm. because it changes changes programming to some level, right? Chris, if yeah. you agree. So it changes, you know, um, if that four, that's another, and, and that's a four eight with a very plain, very close in school choice, yeah, which I'm, I'm saying it's, yeah, I think that's a bad place to be in. Yeah. So I think we need to kind of go back and do a little bit of. That's a 4 8 with 2,000 left in our school right. choice account yeah. at the end mm -hmm. of the day. And, that's it. and then if we have any adjustment in school choice negatively, then we're in, we're in a deficit budget. And so that would be, I yeah. would see, that's not, that's not, that's not smart budget. Into local. Yeah. yeah, that's not, and that's not smart, you know. Right. I mean, we exactly. can go back, so I think we're going to go back and look at it either way, mm -hmm. um, to look at what the different things are and see if, if we can adjust those numbers finitely um, before the Finance Committee. We can do that and, and get that out to everyone, but yeah. I'm just also looking at our timeline. March 4th is our, what well, we have to decide public tonight hearing. is our public hearing. At least it is on our on our timeline, we can yeah. we can adjust the timeline. I just got to make sure I'm following all the rules um, to make sure that the town gets the information ahead of time. But um, we well, would need we would need to have another meeting after 
presentation to the finance committee we adjust the budget because you want to know your budget for at least one sitting right. prior to going to a public hearing on it right i think i think my personal opinion is that we should put our heads together and try to get a smaller number i, I don't i i don't feel comfortable presenting either one of the numbers to be honest with you i mean yeah. I, I think that's just my opinion. Yeah. I think and we if should put you I, I, offload I, school choice back into local, you're only gonna make those numbers go up. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. the double edged yeah. sword here. Right. We, so we could have a meeting prior to the finance, to committee, the finance meeting. committee meeting. You know, um, like literally at the Sebring and Finance yeah. Space, wherever they're meeting and meet an hour prior, go through and in between now and then the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. So what are our no unknowns? The bus uh, contracts, right. that the teacher know. negotiations, right. the money from the state, we'll the know. money from the state. state is pretty much. Yeah, I would say, you know, and again, that's not necessarily something you use to, okay. in a direct office. At, so two unknowns, and we're yeah. probably not going to right. have Chapter that 70, if it goes up, it's going to be a few thousand more. Yeah. You yes. know, it's not going to it's not going to make or break the numbers we're right. talking about. Right. But we're going to have to make these decisions without knowing those. You do it, chapter okay. seventy. You have to go in on the. the I mean the bus. The government didn't vote the budget, budget last year to what you said July. July. Yeah. So okay. you know, so we, we run off of those yeah. proposed. And everybody's in the same boat, so yeah. they can't they yeah. can't mess with the entire state. You know what I mean? Because they would yeah. <laughs> they would it would cause chaos. Um, but so I mean also the bus and the. The bus contract, contract, yeah, we'll the bus contract we'll know tomorrow. Oh, we will we'll know. know tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, um, so, so obviously you'll know. have to vote that, but you will know it tomorrow. Okay. Um, you know, um, so the we'll teacher's have. contract, we won't know before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just the timeline of it. I mean, even if everything goes smoothly, we won't know right. until just before town meeting yeah. if everything goes well. And if it doesn't go well, it might take a little bit longer. Um, so we have to vote on the bus <clears throat> contract as eventually a, a yeah. joint committee or? Yes. Yeah. Um, we probably do it at. Um, or each I, town I have to find out. I have to find out. Mm -hmm. Can we do that Thursday? Yeah. That's what every We won't go do it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night. No. Well, we're going to know tomorrow. <laughs> well, no, it's only going to be Okay. Well, well I, I mean, mean, I guess I have a slightly different approach to Bob is that I feel mm -hmm. like, and based on sort of what Joyce was saying, is that this is not just our problem to solve, this is the <clears> town's <throat> problem. To partner with us in, mm -hmm. and I think we need to be very open with them about what the needs are. Like, mm -hmm. if we want the school to maintain a certain level of service and continue to deliver the high quality services, I think we need to also ask for more, you know, share with them what's happening and see if they'd be willing to shift more mm -hmm. over. I mean, the $50,000 drop in school choice monies is exactly sort of corollary to the 50,000 extra that we're asking for from the town, right? Correct. So um, it's a huge percentage relative to other percentages. But. Can I make a suggestion? Um, maybe the right channel to go through is Brian, mm -hmm. to let Brian know that this is coming, give yep. him a heads up. He'll be meeting with, and he talks informally with the Finance Committee all the time. Yep. Um, and he might be able to get some informal feedback yep. um, about okay. that. Um, it wouldn't be, he might only be able to talk to individuals, he wouldn't really have, but he'd have a better he idea of what the whole town budget looks like, mm -hmm. um, although, like I said, not all the department budgets are in, right. but the sooner they kind of have a little bit of a heads up of what you're struggling with, yeah. the better a partner we can possibly be. Okay. I think it's also important that when we begin to compromise what we offer, we're going to lose opportunities for other choice families looking for a great place to send their kids, so there's right. a an opportunity cost. As this moment right now for next year, do we have how many can we how many school choice openings do we actually have for for next year? We'll say because we're talking about next year's. Um, you have some in each grade. We can do them quickly. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple of grades that have some low First numbers. and third are very low. Well. Which is always right. good. And remember, we're also trying to keep the residents, all those babies that were born, <laughs> want to make sure they stay here. So yeah. that's equally important <laughs> to the town. So, well. Um, when would you guys meet again? Because if you guys meet again, I, I would love to be in on, if you guys are going to talk again as a, a subcommittee, mm -hmm. I would love to. 
come to a, another we meeting? We didn't, we, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have a subcommittee. The chair just came and met with, with me. Okay. That's yeah. different. Okay. You say, I'm just being careful. Okay. First Legally, the that's different because okay. the subcommittee is opposed to the Okay, I'm sorry. Right. So, we don't so, really have a it wasn't appointed by the, the chair came in and went over the budget with us um, just to get um, Better ideas. Better familiar get with familiar. what's going so, um, In other words, if we had a, <clears throat> another... We'd have to have another meeting, right? To review it or... Yeah, I mean, we would have to po post. Oh, it, it, okay, it, yeah, okay. Just yep. um, so the so I guess that's the decision that this group has to make. Is so the, what yeah. we can we can obviously what Joyce just suggested is a good idea is to get an idea where the town is is at mm -hmm. and then to kind of know a heads up of yep. what's coming, um, and then we can create a contingency budget of what does it look like, you know, what what are the things that can be done right. um, because those are choices that have to be made. Um, we can do that meeting. And the question is going into meeting with the, the uh, with FinCon on the 26th, with or without that information. I, I would see, I mean, whatever we present to the finance board, whether we check with Brian or not, you know, select people, whatever, but mm -hmm. I really think that, I think it should be a lower number in some capacity. I mean versus what we've what we've done in the past around the two and a half, which has been great. Mm -hmm. But our argument also, if we stay with the larger number, that we've been at the uh, below the two and a half. That's and why we, we're and, in this and, situation. And, and yeah. we, you know, this is, you know, the years and stuff. I mean, that'd be our, our only other argument for a higher budget would okay. be that. But there again, if the town's not in, in a, in, right. won't accept it, you know, we're gonna we have to go back know. to the joint. But we're gonna have to, to until you know we'll have to go back to the drawing board right it seems like this has been kicked down the road for several years and there's yep. nowhere else to kick it so right. I, mm -hmm. and it sounds to me from what joyce said that it's not going to be a surprise that we've come to the no, end they know this is coming yeah, they, they don't know when but they, 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 <laughs> might, <act> surprised, <laughs> they might not be but, happy <laughs> but there are certain <laughs> people on the finance committee who who know what's going to happen at some point and um you know won't be happy that it's here Right, but right. but we but they've acknowledged it at previous meetings. I, re I I remember listening in on those and uh, uh, and they acknowledge that yes, we understand we're asking you to spend school choice money ahead. And I know uh, at Frontier, and there again, I'm not a finance person, but at Frontier to try to get the assessments done, we take money about it out of E and D to lower the assessment to the towns. In the case of just a town, does a town? kick up free cash to bring our budget down or is it is it just one big pot that we that we spend you know spend I think it depends on the year there are years in which we if we have a lot of free cash okay or if we have we feel like we have sufficient we can spend some of it and but they, they like to keep but some not free the cash the budget at the elementary school like we would do at frontier with E &D for right. Am I, am I right. That? right. Yeah, we don't do yeah. that. We can't you know, do that. yeah, you guys can't have one of those. We can't do that. <laughs> okay. Because you're, um, uh, so essentially. The, just, what did you say? You can't have one of those. <laughs> you can't have one of those. You can't have one of those. Sorry. I'm just asking. I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, take any extra money. Yeah, I guess the, the equivalent is that the town has free yeah, cash. Okay. But so um, sort of uh, exactly okay. how much we have, I don't happen to know. Okay. And I don't know if we're. I don't know for flush. The yeah. school choice typically has, has function been for, right. for public schools yeah. because you don't have a free cash account or you that's don't right. have E&D. Right. And so, yeah. and I mean, I guess the one thing I'm wondering too is this: is this a one-time um, adjustment or is this something every year we're going to be faced with these big increases? Because if this big increase is kind of getting us to a better level playing field, and then we can continue with the two and a half. That's a different story it, it to the finance committee well, than... For example, if you were to move some salaries into the local budget right. this year, that would be a big uptick. Right. But following this year, it would then be whatever the percentage increase has been agreed to through collective bargaining. Right. So it would be a lesser, less of a shock, shall we say, right. in, in subsequent fiscal years. I mean, that's years. what I'd yeah. like the story to be, I think, for the, if we're going to make the case for a big increase, then... It would feel better if we say, you know, we need it right now, but then going forward, it should level off to the more right. palatable two percent, two and a half percent. Until the baby boom comes through Until and displaces school choice children, right. so to speak. 
Because um, we have, uh, yeah. I, I believe there's a record number of three-year-olds running around Waitley right now. <laughs> it's a, it's a, an unusually high number. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is no. a good problem yeah. to have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's that playground. Right. Right. So, and you don't yeah. want to get to a point where you're bringing in school choice <clears throat> kids causes you to have to open another classroom. No, because right. then that's, right. that's yeah. the, you don't that's get the problems. offset, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so no, that's, right. that's that's the conundrum. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm happy going with a bigger number to the finance committee. The question is, do we want to refine it? From what it is now, like, do you guys feel like you can refine it any more than what you've already presented, other than this busing? I mean, we just need to see what the busing does. But my concern is, I mean, being that close, using the school choice the way we're using it is not financially responsible. Right. It's like here, here. So right. how much You're could we have in the school choice there. account at the end of the year? So it just says it's right now. It's saying we're going to have two thousand at the end. Right, of the but year. what should our target be? I would say you have. I would say you have, to have around twenty or twenty or more. I'd in say the sense. between. Uh, I'd say fifty would be the most comfortable place. But if you can't get it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but if we're you also can. we're also talking about spending a year ahead, right. not having the exact year where right. we used to have. Well, right. back that, in that's the day, what, that's my problem, is Bob. Is that right now there's our budget is projecting with the current enrollment that we'll have two thousand dollars left over in school choice. This is the hundreds of thousands yeah. we've had in the past. Yeah. And so if a student leaves, okay. You're done. Yeah, you're done. This person just, you know, they they move. Or somebody they comes move, in. but not even leaving like as a decision. Well, we they want to or we get a kid that comes in that needs we, services. Those get built back though. So that's not gonna yeah. be that's not gonna be an issue there. But you're right. Or you know, so but you lose one kid and we're in deficit and that's not smart. No. And so I think we have to at least adjust this budget to take more off of school choice to put it healthier there. It's gonna rise that percentage and then we gotta look at bringing that percentage down because there's no way I mean, let's be realistic. We can't get them. I mean, the four is is a huge stretch yeah. to begin with. You go higher than that. That's just people are going to say they're we're not playing with real numbers. So, um, well, if you, know, you can get we, to four, we, we, have to, we have to go and look at it. We have to try to do some kind of adjustments on it. Yeah, if you can get to four, I don't know what kind of adjustments that's going to mean. Well, I have to look at that. Yeah, I I don't. I think we just leave this the alternative with the out the with the IA or not. I think we just take that off because I don't like having the discussion. Like we don't know. Let's just plan for it and and keep the higher number. We don't. I think so. So let's do this. Let's, I don't like having it down there because it just creates a lot of conversation. Let's create. That we don't want to be having. Let's have a school committee meeting just prior to our meeting with, with them the with a. With a, you're asking for, and I agree, a single number because you mm -hmm. can't, you, you can't, can't go, you right? Can't really you can't, just, you can't put that in a, into a public. I mean, even though this is a public forum, but right. into that kind of public forum in, in a small community. Right. So, yeah. um, we will either have that number in, or an adjusted number of that, or mm -hmm. that kind of thing, ready to go, and um, any kind of adjustments we can do in the budgets there. That sounds good. And so then, you want to meet before the meeting on the twenty sixth. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be. I want to be. I think we should be just before. Yes. Oh, like really, okay. literally before. We we do that occasionally with the frontier subcommittee, where the okay. budget subcommittees prior to, right the meeting, to the meeting, just so the administration can present the budget. Okay. Everybody can agree. Yep. You know, if there's any. Right. Um, okay. And so. Is right it possible now. to do it? Yeah, I'm thinking, thinking what you're going to say. Different time. I have. Uh, a staff oh. event, I think would be part of it. Just kidding. Staff event. All right. At what time? Is it after work or after yeah, school? Yeah, 3.30 or 4.30. Well, we wouldn't be meeting until they like 5 or 5. five. But we... Um, were you the I'm one trying to see if it was 5 30. Did you get yeah. any response on yeah, that? Yeah, so I asked if the Whaley side could be later, but that would mean that the frontier side is earlier because they want to do both frontier and Whaley. So then you two wouldn't be available earlier, potentially. I would. Us two. Yeah. For the front, yeah. I could be there for, I'm going to be there for both anyway, so. Right. Is that, I mean. Well, uh, what, what? I was thinking, can we meet, can we meet. In the morning? Day, no, sometime before, days before that. Well, you guys have so many meetings. Well, this is a Tuesday, so like Monday. 
And it's certainly easier to manipulate schedules when there are no children in the building, so I don't know if we can play with vacation week. Oh, yeah. I'm around. I'm around. Is that vacation week the 25th? Uh, or is it the no, 18th? 18th. Well, are you guys supposed to get vacation? No, sorry. <laughs> vacation? No. It's not well, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Mon Monday is the holiday. Yeah. yeah. And then Tuesday, I'm not sure what's going on. We will not have electricity in this building on that day, okay. so no. I have to figure out Where what that be? means for us. <laughs> electricity. <laughs> but for a meeting, missing something? Could, yeah, you could get a meeting room over it. We're trying to save office. money. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we could turn the power off one day. No, it has something to do with the generator. They have to. Connect. They're connecting. Can we, the can we? Can we? Can we meet? We can meet. On the we can meet. How about if we meet on the twenty fifth in the morning? Have a, a, a special first thing meeting morning. first thing Monday morning, the first day when the kids come back. I'm just yeah, asking. I don't know what you're saying. That's actually not a terrible idea. I mean, if we meet then, that gives us. If if we have to type up, put, if we make some right. changes, yeah. we can type it up that day. I can, well, I can make the changes yeah. within the budget master because everything is linked. So if you tell me to put in a number, I don't have my number, schedule with me, but I will. I think that's okay. So you're looking on the Monday or the Tuesday? Yeah, either the Tuesday. Should we do Tuesday? Since the day it's of, better for you guys. I got both. Both things are open. You're you're flexible, both right? Are open. I'm probably available both those days. I don't have my calendar yeah, in front of me either. So is it? I would I think rather it's probably Tuesday. I think Tuesday. Yeah, let's do Tuesday. Just because I also we're pulling Chrissy. You know, you got to open up a building. Yeah, first thing. Break. The principal usually has to be available. So. Turn the power back on. Someone's got to turn the power. She's got to, someone's got to find a light. She's got to get on the bicycle. <laughs> okay, so the goal we're is. We're going to put kids on it and we're going to call it our wellness policy. So, oh. 226 at 8 a.m. We'll and meet for a, a relatively brief meeting. The only thing, the only thing on the subject will be budget. Updated budget. budget. It will just be budget. To create the final presentation yep. to the finance committee that evening. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll go away and print. Whatever okay. we need to print out for that. Thanks. Sure. Okay. And I will preview with Brian what's going, where we are heading. Okay. But, and, and let you know what I, he says. And then, um, what else? And then, do we need to set our public? So we need to formally. Hearing? Do, are we continuing with the March fourth? Is the public hearing currently on our uh, on the big calendar? Um, and so March fifth, March fourth, March fourth, rather. Is that our March meeting, or is that? It is. It is it's our both. March so we do. You do a usually do the hearing prior, and then you go do regular business afterwards. Mm -hmm. So we put the first thing on the agenda. <coughs> Unless Joyce shakes her head no. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's it. how it usually is done. I guess I'm not I'm not convinced we'll be totally ready with depending what the finance committee says to us. Put it so we can, if it's if it's if it's if we're not ready, then we can always put it off to the eleventh no, so maybe. The, so the problem is this: you have to be forty. You have to be conservative because this has to go in the newspaper. It's got it's, it's not just a regular posting. Yeah. Or is that just the regional budget? That's just the regional oh, budget. Ask Brian. No, but I think you can continue it, it here. Small town to have one. So this one has to be. It's a yeah. again. So it has to be put in the newspaper that you're having. Yeah. Couple weeks ahead of time. That you're having a hearing. Yeah. yeah. So we can't go the week before changing it. But you can continue a hearing. If you open your hearing and you have your you you can take your public input there and you if you don't come up with a conclusion then you can so continue it, it to your next meeting. I I you can check with Brian about okay. that as well, but I'm pretty sure pretty much any but, hearing can be continued to but also to a date remember. certain, you know. I remember the past, and I'm yeah. just going by the past here at Waitley Elementary School. It may have nobody or right. one person right. at our public meeting. Well, right. especially if we've already gone to FinCon with it. So right. Right. So gonna, last year it was only Paul and Taya that showed up for our public meeting yeah. when we had the budget. Mm -hmm. um, it was nice that Joyce came today, but you, you know how meetings yeah. are in Waitley sometimes, Joyce. It just. Yeah. yeah. So what is that? So you're saying <sighs> don't. I mean, I think we try, and then yeah. if we can get it done, we get it done, and if not, we continue it to okay, another time. I didn't realize time. that we do that, so that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, so Thank we'll you. plan on the 4th still, or fifth, Thank you. whatever, that Tuesday. The 4th. Now the question Tuesday, is, are we going to do it in the morning? Tuesday's or the 5th. 
Yeah, right. that's Frontier's bud budget here, the fifth. So wait. So it's Monday the fourth. Yeah. Oh, it was. Fourth is our public our, our public meetings on the fourth at night. According to it right now. I and mean, I'm looking at our little budget calendar here. Right? Wait, we I have it from March fourth. Wait, wait. It's wait. a evening. Currently, it's an evening meeting, but this is it's on the, it's the next thing on the agenda. Is that you guys need to establish yeah. what this because we've moved around meeting times and such. Um, well, we since it's a it. Monday, and Joyce is here. She may come back on that Monday meeting. Paul and Tay is retired. She may come, but mm -hmm. it'll be people who don't work, retired, or have the morning off. I like the morning meetings. I, I you know, it gets everybody else home, especially like Chrissy, maybe at the end of the day, <laughs> instead of sitting around having pizza. <laughs> we do a cold beer or something. You know, yeah. <laughs> we don't do that. Not, not, not in the building. Not before <laughs> <laughs> um, do you care? Do you have a I don't care. No. Okay. Well, why don't we stick with the morning? I guess for the year. Your call. And so um, we we're looking at March fourth at eight a.m. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Monday, March fourth. Do you think Mondays? And I'm thinking about you two young ladies with kids. Is 8.15 better for you guys on, we'll say, any morning or Monday morning? I will, I will say you can move the date now. You can move the date because you're doing morning. Because right now Frontier has Tuesday, Tuesday, Deerfield has Wednesday, and Union Negotiation has Thursday. So, yeah. <laughs> so you can go any morning you want. It's just you couldn't, the evenings Tuesday are all kind of tied up. Tuesday's probably just, it's tough to get them. Yeah, Monday's door. Tough. Yeah. So Tuesday's, so, yeah. Tuesday's better on, on everybody because we yeah, can get our we, we don't do. I won't be there Tuesday. You won't be there? Oh. Well, I can do Monday. I, but I, but you I'm saying we, do 8 15, 15, we can do 815, Maureen. We can do 815. That way it doesn't push you guys out of the house too early with your kids to come to school. So we could do 815. Yeah, 815 would be a little better. We could also do Cause We talked about it this morning. So well, we should have posted it for 815 because it gives you guys a little bit more time and stuff. That's, that's the only thing I'm thinking of. Okay, well, I think Tuesday is a better morning. Okay. I, yeah. uh, Joyce has... Our whole audience is going to be missing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, but you sh you've I, given a lot of good input today that will hopefully be factored in. Uh, yeah. No, I just I teach on Tuesday mornings. You do. The oh. only reason I can be here Monday is because... I see, in, in general. In, and they don't happen to teach on Monday mornings. So. Yeah. Okay. But if we do it eight fifteen on Monday, that okay. that, that gives yeah. you guys extra time. 15. Yeah, eight fifteen Monday. So we'll do the fourth at eight fifteen. Sorry. Luckily, I don't have a pen, so I didn't have to write it down <laughs> five ten times. times. <laughs> <laughs> like a pen now. <laughs> okay. Well, since you're writing down here, Bob, you want to put in that. <clears throat> Frontiers are going to be on Tuesday. At six. And then Thursday, you have union negotiations. At I got that. Oh, you got the one. I'm just yeah. helping with this calendar. <laughs> so, <laughs> do we need to <laughs> vote on those meetings, or? Um, you know, it, it's written in the. I don't know. It's we have to vote on it. We have don't to vote we? to schedule a night. meeting time for the public. Oh, that morning. Yeah, we have to vote right now, you guys are voting to first and second at public it. hearing. Right. We're going to vote on the actual budget that yes. after public comment. We're going to vote on it that day, unless we're going to make more changes. Right. right. On that day, for some reason. Right. right. On but the fourth. Today we need to vote on scheduling that meeting. Yes. The yes. public hearing. Yes. Right. So I make so. a motion to have it on Monday, fourth at eight fifteen a.m. Okay. Second. All in favor. Right. Um. Okay. So I don't know if we have up, I know we have a shorter time frame, but any updates? I did. I do have a quick update on the capital projects. I went to the capital budget meeting, and um, they, we prioritized all the projects, and they, they really appreciated the visit of the school. The capital committee went and visited all the different town was great. Did that offices, and they really I think got a lot out of coming here. So thank you guys for giving them a little tour and showing them everything. Um, so it sounds like they're having the capital meeting shortly, and they're going to be progressing that along. We'll find out. Correct me. Thanks, what, Joyce. Do we, what do we have for the Thank school? Thank you, Joyce. What do we have we for the have, school? We um, have rug replacement and tile, putting tile in the rest of the classrooms with the rugs and the nurse's office. Okay. That was prioritized higher um, than 
the second thing, which is the air conditioning. <laughs> I'm putting in air conditioning units in some of the offices, replacing the window units is okay. the other thing yeah. for the time being. And then, of course, there's the sprinkler, which is going out to bid again. So that's a different a way or the same way. Um, I Do you know? They must have it. Right. The problem is that they, because it went over fifty thousand dollars, it was not bidded. It was we went for quotes instead of bids, and so now they did the formal bid process. Okay. okay. So we're hoping to get that one done first and foremost, and then move on to. Another. Is that something? Do you know when those will come back approximately? Yeah, I got an email late last week from Brian. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then my only other update is to congratulate Darius on being our new superintendent, which Thank we're all you. very Yay. excited about. Yay. Yay. People don't know that. I think hopefully everybody knows that. To, to answer Bob's question, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the bids, bid has gone out and the submission deadline is February 22nd. So that's where we are with the speculators. <clears throat> I didn't know if something, if we had the bids back and they could do it school vacation, but maybe April vacation. Maybe. They, 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 they may be shooting later. Another thing we keep kicking down summer. the road. Yeah, okay. summer. It, yeah, most likely. Yeah, you mentioned summer time. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So, any other updates from collaborative? Um, yes. Well, they had their financial report and some different presentations and things, but they, um, I had them send some uh, things out to the school committee members. There's some letter going around for support for the rural aid. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at yeah. that. And they yeah, had that, yeah. passed these around. I had two of them. Just so you guys probably might know this stuff. Let me pass those around. Um, and one thing I thought was interesting, one of the school committee members, I don't know if he was from Belchertown or Leverett, but he said they got a line item from their legislator to have a new STEM class. So I don't know if we can. Belcher Town. What's that? Belcher, Belcher, Belcher Town. I don't know how that works. If we have any special projects that we can ask our legislator to hmm. put yeah, in the Eric line item. What's Eric Lesser put that to Was that in the elementary school? He's also school? Uh, yeah. working on something to encourage folks from the Boston area to, to live to here. Western yeah. Mass. Yes. So we yeah. may want to give him a, a Waitley brochure so we can, right. so we can send market our school because yeah. it's a great school. place to live. So he's when you're asking him for a STEM the, teacher, the can you, can you he's take like care of He's not person. our, is he our legislator? No, no. he's, uh, he he's in, in part of Hampshire. He, does, he, yeah. has, he has part of um, Belchertown, so yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know who's we have. He's senator, right? Yes. Joe Comerford will be on because yeah, that's the good. one who was chairing the uh, study of East West High Speed Rail. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think we should try and start talking to our legislators and see if we can get them to help in general. I mean, we don't qualify for the rural aid quite as much, right? <coughs> we don't in the, so I, I handed out a packet, which is what um, Maureen was talking about, and it also talked about the other rural aid um, proposal that mm -hmm. they're having out there that's kind of an equal. Um, a lot of communities did not get support with the first go around the rural, um, rural aid to schools. Um, the only one in our greater district was Sunderland got $4,800. Okay. <laughs> and so it, it was, you know, we'll take every little thing we can, but not compared to the hundreds of thousands some other districts got, and then some districts were completely left off the list. So, you know, they're looking for, um, you know, better equity within that system. And obviously a lot more money. They went after looking for nine million. They got one point five. Mm -hmm. So and that's really a drop in the bucket compared to the overall educational budget. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So there's different ideas out there. Um, I mean, try to stay optimistic about it. But I'm not sure they're going to do a full reform and throw lots of money at us. Mm -hmm. um, but they're trying. Yeah. And we have a meeting this Friday. This Friday, with the um, area. Politicians and the superintendents are getting together okay. to discuss um, how the funding is working and not working in our schools. Mm -hmm. Supposed to bring examples of such. So, oh, okay. <clears throat> feel free to use Waitley and the falling off the cliff. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's it's interesting is that I don't our know story. If other schools are doing. It. I mean, this is, we're hitting a different interesting spot with our the story of the school. But you have to remember that our schools that 
the cliff was a long time ago. Right. They don't they don't right. get school choice and they can't offset every year they go, yeah, How they much are, are we losing? It's it's another expense item rather than a revenue island right. um, item rather. So um, yeah, so it's a very tricky right. conversation. Conversation, yeah. Okay. Principal update? Sure. Um, some information about some community service projects that our kids have taken on so far this year. The, um, the grade three students were very busy selling teddy bears to be distributed to local shelters uh, and organizations serving children in Holyoke. Um, students in grade four carried out that food drive we spoke of mm -hmm. last time. And um, the kids in grades four, five, and six participated in Learn, Bake, Share, which was pretty awesome to see. And then yeah, the kids all learned how to bake bread and then they went home with the ingredients and the tools to make it. Um, and then they were to make one loaf that could stay at home and one loaf that came back in and a group of kids went to the Waitley Senior Center to deliver 48 loaves of bread. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, so there were <laughs> 48 parents who had to spend their weekend <laughs> making making bread. Oh, that kid made it by herself. <laughs> I helped. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had Courtney Campbell come perform for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I then, heard really good things about her. Yeah, that was, that was great. She actually got in touch with me to see if I could connect her to some other schools in the, mm -hmm. in the area. So I think I'll, I'll do that, but I'll charge a fee for that. So she'll have to come back here for free <laughs> next time. Um, I hope she's not watching. We'll get her half price next year. <laughs> um, Tanglewood Marionettes are here today, and mm. the first show will be happening at 10 o'clock. Um, you guys are all welcome to stay and watch. Uh, this morning will be Sleeping Beauty, and this afternoon the older kids will see Perseus and Medusa. Mm -hmm. And that um, is from a grant from the Wheatley Cultural Council. They're really top notch. Yeah, that's awesome. I've, I've seen them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and uh, Paula King is the one who wrote the grant, and she um, she wrote it for a little bit more than last time they had them here because she felt that the it was hard to have a show that the pre-K kids enjoyed as well as the sixth yeah. graders. So that's, that's where we're nice. having the two different shows. Um, very cool thing happened here last Thursday. Uh, I'm sure Margaret told you about mm -hmm. that. Um, the sixth grade students got to school early so that they could have a, a video phone call with a group of similarly aged students in Nigeria. Um, and those students had to stay at school late in order for there to be some, some crossover. And it got canceled because of snow, which in Nigeria they probably don't get as much yeah. <laughs> the yeah. first time. Well, and, th and then we were supposed to have some icing that morning, so mm. we were concerned that. But it, it was great. It went off. Um, it was it was really kind of amazing to watch the two groups of kids communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and Terry Anderson, who's one of our special ed teachers, works really hard to, to bring the world to Wheatley. We really appreciate her efforts. Um, I've had the chance to sit down with several of our teachers to just uh, check in on how all of the students are doing and map out the rest of the year. And then we've got a couple things going on this week. The fifth graders will go to the planetarium at mm -hmm. DA and our global leaders, um, which is our equivalent of a student council, will go to the soldier's home to deliver Valentine cards on Friday. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, so I, I like all these, these projects that we have going on that connect our kids to <coughs> yeah, different places in the world and, and different folks even yeah. about it. Thank you. Superintendent, update. Sure. Um, and my superintendent's report I handed out to you has the dates of all the upcoming negotiations. We probably want to do a check in at our next, not the budget meeting we have, but our next full meeting. We can okay. probably do an executive session to get you guys up to speed about where things are going there. Um, we'll have a little bit, I have a little bit I could share today, but we'll be, have more information at the next one. Um, bus contract we already talked about has gone out to bid. The rural aid. Um, handout I gave to you, I, we just already talked about. Um, the next full meeting, we also need to do a school choice vote, which I think you guys remember you have to do each year just to mm -hmm. claim yourself a school choice school. That probably would not be the year to stop being a school choice school. <laughs> 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 um, and um, I posted the business manager's position 
Um, and the timeline on that is it's open this entire month, and then in March we'll, we'll do the interview process, and then hopefully we'll have somebody um, lined up for the April joint meeting. Have we got any applicants? Yeah. Oh. So, and additionally, I also was on a part of is the profit loss statement for um, school lunches. We had talked about, at least some other committees had talked about, they wanted us to roll in all costs, including um, um, including insurance and those kind of things for those employees. We did not, based on the, being middle budget season, we had to put that off. But mm -hmm. um, but just showing that where we are within month to month, we did have, we are in a good place. We're in the black, um, uh, $499. So That's great. Anytime, That's anytime a lunch program is in the black, you're Woo! Good, you're good that, so. Um, Wow. Oh, yeah. I, think that's <laughs> I don't nice. think I've ever seen it in black since I've been here. Well, really? <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's going to well. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Okay, I know we need to move on. Thank you for all the good budget work. I'm looking forward to more budget work. <laughs> exactly. It's the it's season. season. Oh, oh, oh. Now we can have some cake. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll wait until so the camera's off. Second motion to adjourn. Yeah, anybody want to make a motion to make a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye.